Hi everyone, welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica, thanks for joining me. Thought I'd show you how to make a negative stencil without a cutting machine. It's just a simple stencil of a leaf. I'll be using the back of this Dollar Tree Christmas sign. I had this in my stash from last Christmas. I've drawn a maple leaf on some cardstock and I've cut it out. If you're not good at drawing, you can always use clip art. I'll trace my leaf onto the back of some shelving liner. I get mine at Target, but I know most Dollar Trees sell it. And to save time on cutting, I'll fold my shelf liner in half and just follow the lines on the one side. This will give me symmetry on both sides of the leaf. Then I'll peel the backing off of my leaf and place it in the center of my plaque. Mine will be slightly askew. I'm using Ceram Coat, Tropic Bay Blue as my base coat. Okay, so here's where I started base coating, and then I realized that I got a little ahead of myself. I could see that the paint was lifting my vinyl, but that's okay, it happens. So, to fix this, I need to dab Mod Podge around the edges of the leaf to prevent the paint from seeping under it. Now that that's done, we can move forward no problem. I'm using a quick loose stroke with a somewhat dry brush so I have a distressed kind of finish. You can see that I'm not going quite to the edges completely and I'm allowing the raw material to peek through. And I'll paint the edges that way as well. Using burnt orange and floating medium I'm going to float in the separation lines of our faux palette. First, I dip my brush into the medium, stroking it on my plate to load the bristles. Then, I'll scoop some burnt orange onto one corner of my brush, and I'll stroke it on my plate, again, to load the brush with the paint. Prepping my brush this way will allow me to get a gradient of color, and that'll give my strokes a bit more dimension. I'll float my color following the line that's notched out. I want it to look like it's separate planks of wood. Once I have one side of the line painted, I'll flip the board around and follow that same line with the paint side of my brush. I'll do this to each separate section all the way down the plank, including the top and the bottom plank. You'll see what I mean. The good thing about this is that the lines don't have to be perfect. They can be a bit wonky because I really want them to look old and kind of beat up. Now 
And for a little more embellishment, I'm going to dry brush the sides. Now, I'll dry brush on some teal mint to add a little more character. I'm hitting just above and below and beside the burnt orange. And I'll hit some random spots also. And it's time to peel and reveal. I have this beautiful leaf shape, which I will base coat with spiced pumpkin, and I'll give it two coats. I always start by following the lines of my shape and filling it in as I go. Painting is just so relaxing, almost meditative really. I switch to a smaller brush for the stem and then I'll just add my second coat. For the veining, and to give the leaf some autumn flavor, I'll start with Amber Glow. It's a reddish orange color, perfect for fall. I dip my liner into the float medium, and then into the paint. I'll start with the largest vein, which is the one that runs down the center. And I'm using kind of a sketchy stroke. Then I'll do the offshoots to the sides. Then I'll add some offshoots that fork out from all three of those veins. Using float medium and amber glow, I'm going to float around the perimeter of the entire leaf. and I reload my brush as necessary. and I'll add some shading along the veining.
and I'll repeat the process with burnt orange. If you've seen any of my other painting videos, you'll know that I love to build color. Not exactly on top of each other, but more alongside, slightly on top, I guess. I like for my shading to fan out and fade one color into the next. I'm just strengthening those veining lines. And now I'm going to add some Irish moss in the exact same way. Also, I should mention that I'm using a dirty brush, so there is still some of the burnt orange on this brush. Now I'm going to add to the veining by side loading my brush with the Irish moss and I'll run straight up that line. I'm leading with the color side of my brush. Shading the veins with some of that green. Bit more to the tips of the leaves and to the stem. Now we'll punch up the color with some opaque red. I'm a little more selective with where I put the red. I don't want it to be overwhelming. I really just want it to have hints of red. Now I'll add a shadow around the outside of my leaf with bluegrass green. And it's the same method. I don't like this brush. I'm going to get a new one. I'm just going to shade the entire perimeter of the leaf but on the outside. I'm 
I think the color of the shadow, the blue-grass green, really makes that orange stand out even more. Not done yet. Gonna highlight with some cantaloupe. I'll concentrate the cantaloupe more to the center of the leaf. And I'll add a wee bit to the very tip. Now with white, I'll float some highlights to my board. and just a wee bit to the leaf. To finish it off, I'll add some sprinkles with a wet toothbrush and some bluegrass green, just by running my thumb over the bristles. And as always, I'll spray with a clear matte sealer. You could, of course, add the hanger back to this, but for me, I want it to be a shelf setter. This was a really affordable, quick project and it shows you that you don't necessarily need a cutting machine to do something like this. I hope you guys had as much fun watching as I did painting this project. We'd love if you would subscribe, like and share, comment if you like. And as always, stay creative my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. I'll see you next time. Up all night with Monica.